this time we're going to focus on thyroid function assessment especially on typical issues as to what can go wrong and what are the various factors that we have to assess in terms of evaluating the thyroid functions so thyroid function assessment what are the indications when do you do thyroid function so there are three areas in which you can do error when you are evaluating any functions the errors could be pre analytical analytical and post analytical which is most important area dr vibha where you make the maximum error what do you mean by pre analytical so which sample to do when to do which tube to do which technique to do timing all those things become important so maximum errors happen there 50% errors will happen here it could be type of sample you want to do tsh you do t3 you want to do ft4 you want to do t4 so that becomes difficult timing you say do in the morning you are doing in the night sample type also those things will become important analytical is basically the assay so it's the quality control of the lab this is around 30% so this you can't do much but you need to know when the results are abnormal what could be the possible causes and post analytical what do you mean by post analytical so post analytical like uh, how do we uh, interpret the results like so this is i would say the most important thing which a clinician should be aware of, which is the most important part of the stethoscope Yeah. The one between the ears. So same thing is about these results. So the lab is good, everything is good. Of course, no, uh, you may do some errors in writing, but when you analyze and interpret, that is the most important. So from a clinical perspective, post analytical is most important. Reporting how is it done, range, interpretation, and all those things become important. So errors can happen anywhere. We'll discuss one by one. so thyroid function test now we have discussed a lot which test should be ordered so basically we said tsh is the best test but often first time tsh alone is not good enough you need to do something else you can do it at any time of the day because the variation is not very huge so somebody is coming to you at 4 o'clock you can do a tsh right away you don't say okay come tomorrow and they will never come that sort of a thing is not required T4 has got lot of variation so morning T4 is the best especially if somebody is on medication and when you are using T4 you may think of doing a free T4 if you have got a good test in that regards T3 as i said has affected by the MDI activity it is of limited role at all so in hypothyroidism we should look at TSH and T4 with limited effect of T3 so FT4 TSH is the indication in hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis you should measure all and i would suggest you measure t3 ft4 and tsh remember not ft3 but t3 now second issue would of course be the analytical issues which are there so what can be the problems of tsh issues so what is cross reactivity uh, navin so it can uh, react to basically if it is a structurally reactive. similar things can be measured so this is measured via specificity sensitivity is how low you can measure specificity is how do you differentiate between the two but these structures are very different earlier assays used to have problems because of that but now you don't have a issue you won't measure as cgs tsh it won't be that much problem so that's not a issue the second major issue is this what are the difference between these two tsh if you measure using amino acid will you find a difference the alpha and beta unit are the same but the glycosylation is different so amino activity will be the same bioactivity will be different so dr pratik what do you think in what conditions will be this happening this is the isoforms so where this activity will be low falsely low low central hypothyroidism and falsely high in tsh producing tumor so these isoforms you can't measure but how important are they people don't know for lot of these compounds now they have a standard isoform growth hormone they say okay this kilo dalton compound you should measure so same is coming for tsh also but not yet now you can have this situation in which tsh is circulating with its antibody and that will cause a confusion and a problem 
what problem will it cause? It can in uh, means sometime higher than higher uh, be diagnosed sometime higher level in this case of lower level according to with this you will say higher or lower? What is this? Sir, in with this we uh, we diagnose higher level. So this is like macroprolactin. TSH is pretty much similar to prolactin in that sense. So if you have a complex of TSH with a antibody, you can have falsely high TSH, which will be measured. This is macro TSH. So what do you do? How will you correct this? Uh, so the non-competitive assay. Pegylation. So like for prolactin, if it's macro prolactin, use a pegylated assay. Same thing you can use it in that setting. So these are important parts. Now we'll go through a few cases, Dr. Vibha. A 10-year-old girl with hypothyroidism, thyroxine 100, TSH is 54. Her last TSH was 5. She has got good compliance and new thyroid. What will you do? All of a sudden, if TSH is very high, clinically, she looks normal. So you want to do a repeat TSH. So whenever you have confusion, better to do a repeat test. Repeat TSH is 2.5. Now they are very angry that this lab has done the wrong result. What is the, what could be the possible reason that you can think of? Carryover effect. What is carryover effect? So if the previous sample has a higher value, then some of the part of the TSH has come to the next. So suppose the patient just before this patient had a TSH of 1000. And somehow the quality control of that machine, they are not able to wash it properly. That some amount of serum is left and that is known as carryover effect. Now, many of these automated measures do multiple washes now. So this becomes less, but this may happen. So this is a carryover effect, which you need to be aware about. Now, uh, Dr. Sain, 12-year-old boy, routine screening, TSH is 14, FT4 is normal. What do you think? He's totally normal. Somebody said, let's do thyroid. Again, it may be the case which just showed up a TSH receptor antibody. TSH receptor, not TSH antibody. TSH antibody. Okay, so you thyroid TPO negative. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly high. Somebody said, okay, let's leave it. Let's see follow up. No features. Started on thyroxine. So this is very important. So this is what you're talking about macro TSH, oh. just like macro prolactin. So ideally, if you quote unquote are finding somebody whose TSH is slightly high, always think of this possibility and pegylation will help out in that setting, will help you in that regards. Uh, Dr. Naveen, 14 year old boy with craniopharyngioma, follow up after surgery, FT4 is 0.7 and TSH is 12. This is? But TSH is 12 because of? So this is bio inactive TSH. So inactivity is less. So this is the isoform. So this is a bio inactive TSH, which you are finding. Now, next important concept is heterophile antibody. What is heterophile antibody? Well, in human, we have some antibodies hmm? that are routinely present. And if we do the diagnosis... Against what? Hmm? Against what are the heterophile antibodies? It's mainly thyroid TSH. Heterophile means what? You are correct, they are present in the body, but they are against what? Against other animals. So why is it relevant? Because uh, often if you look at though how the tests are being done, they use sometimes mouse serum, they sometimes use horse serum and all those things. So if you have antibodies against that, that will cause confusion. So heterophile antibody, the non-specific antibodies against multiple antigens, rheumatoid factor is one of those heterophile antibodies, which can cause confusion. And most common is anti-mouse. So if somebody, let's say, is uh, working in some lab in which mouse or rat are being used, they may develop antibody more likely. So there this problem will become more in that perspective. So now if the antibody binds to the antigen and takes it off, you will have falsely low reading. But if it links between the binding antibody and the signal antibody, the level will be high. So heterophile antibody can cause falsely high result as well and falsely low result as well. The classical example is for TSH. I have seen patients in which some labs, the TSH was very low. When we did from the other lab, it was more than 100. So that was because of this. Then you change the assay, it, the result will be normal. 
So different platform, dilution study and anti anti antibody will be used, which can help you out in that regard. Twenty-four year old lady amenorrhea, Doctor Vibha, FT four is low, TSH is normal. Diagnosis? So, which is, uh, subclinical. Subclinical. Sorry, sorry. FT four is low. low. TSH is normal. normal. Central hypothyroidism. So you start, did MRI, cortisol, everything normal. You started on thyroxine. Then they went to a different lab. And then after treatment, the TSH is 90. What do you think is happening? This is from a different lab. Different lab. It could be due to this, as you have said. So this is the case which I was discussing about that they had diagnosed quote-unquote central, but then suddenly they got it from a different lab. It was high. So what this means is that this is the heterophile antibody you have to consider. Now, if you change the platform, when you say platform means machine in a very simple crude terms, it means that it will be normal in the other platform. This is what you should be aware about in that regard. Now, binding globulins, we have discussed already. A lot of effects can be there in terms of binding globulin. 10-year-old girl with poor concentration, cyan, height, weight, normal, youth, thyroid. TSH is normal, T4 is low. You, you agree with central hypothyroidism? No, so you should measure free T4 before you do that. It may be central, nobody is stopping that, but you have to measure free T4, which was found to be normal. So this is low T4, normal TSH, most common is TBG abnormality. It is not usually central hypothyroidism in that perspective and TBG deficiency will be there. Dr. Naveen, 16-year-old girl with hirsutism and oligomenorrhea, T3 is high, T4 is high, TSH is normal, clinically you thyroid. Is it TSH producing adenoma? We say that if T4 is high and TSH is normal, this is TSH producing adenoma. So maybe she might be on OCPs. So we need to ask for history of any drugs to take. So very importantly, you have to look at history. You said estrogen progesterone and FT4 was normal. So TBG abnormalities you need to be aware of. Now, one very interesting effect is the effect of heparin. Now, what heparin does is that it acts on the lipoprotein lipase and hepatic lipase. This we know. It then causes relief of fatty acids. And these fatty acids will displace the TBG from T4. So this is what I was discussing. They will cause falsely high FT4 while your TSH will be normal. Now, suppose your blood, you have given somebody heparin. Somebody is on a low molecular weight heparin and you take the sample. You measure it now and you measure it after six hours. Manoj, which one will have a higher FT4? After six hours. Why? Because it's time. Because, no, it takes time. This process is continuing. Because heparin is there in the blood. It is releasing fatty acids. That is going to cause all these problems. So, if you have sample which is stored, it will be worse off in that perspective. And that becomes important. So what you do, before you give the injection of heparin, you take the sample. That will be the ideal scenario. So 18-year-old boy, Dr. Pratik, uh, uh, ICU and management, FT4 is 4.2, TSH is normal. And T4, T3 is normal, clinically youth thyroid. Probably the sample has been taken from a side. So either from a heparinized side or somebody is on heparin, or, the, or even if your fatty acids are very high. So let's say in the theoretically in the setting of DK also, if your fatty acids are very high, you may have this scenario happening as well. So never measure thyroid in that sort of a scenario. So here, this is basically because of being on low molecular weight heparin, there was an effect on non-esterified fatty acid, which caused T4 to release. And therefore, you had a falsely high and pre-heparin report was normal. So unusual reports. We said that if your FT4 is high, TSH is low. FT4 is low, TSH is high. If you see unusual reports, think of lab errors before you rush to a diagnosis in that setting. <coughs> Dr. Sain, 22-year-old girl with thyrotoxicosis, FT4 is very high, TSH is very low. No clinical features of thyrotoxicosis. What will you do? Yes, no the... tremor, nothing. Hi. Anything on history you would like to take? Any drug history? Taking drugs. Which drugs? Yeah, thyroid. So thyroid, you, she will have clinical features of thyrotoxicosis. 
She is clinically euthyroid, yet FT4 is more than uh, very, very high. Sir, other drugs which decrease the binding of Okay. So she had a history of hair fall and was taking a very high dose of biotin. Now, biotin is basically there in many of these assays where they are using as enzymes, where they are using as a threat. So if you take high dose of biotin, you can have falsely high FT4 level and a low level of TSH secondarily because of that. But B2 or B12 levels will also be very high. So this could be one of the clue. Now what you do, you just wait for two days, it will be washed out. It's a urinary, it will wash out in urine and this may happen. This is a known effect which you have to be careful about. So we have now discussed about the analytical issues, now come to the post-analytical issues. In post-analytical issues, we all know that there is a log linear relationship between T4 and TSH. If your FT4 goes down, your TSH will go up and it should be more than 20. This is primary hypothyroidism. If it's less than 20, this is central hypothyroidism. If FT4 is high and TSH is low or undetectable, this is thyrotoxicosis. If it is detectable, it is a TSH producing adenoma or very rarely you have a pituitary resistance to thyroid hormone. If you interpret from all three, we can say that if TSH is low, T4 is low, FT3 is low, this is central hypothyroidism. Even if your FT3 is normal, this is central hypothyroidism. If your FT3 is high, but T4 is low and TSH is low, this is Naveen. T3 is high, T4 is low and TSH is low. T3, T3 toxicosis, T3 treatment. If your T3 and T4 is high and TSH is low, this is thyrotoxicosis. If your T3 is high, T4 is normal and TSH is low, this is T3 toxicosis. So if you evaluate all three, you would be able to make the diagnosis in that perspective. If TSH is normal and your FT4 is high, this is TSH secreting adenoma or resistance. If all low, this is central hypothyroidism. So if you look at this picture, you will be able to identify mostly all the possible causes of thyroid dysfunction. Now, if you talk about high TSH, of course, everything normal is subclinical, everything low is overt hypothyroidism. So we are classifying based upon TSH low normal, FT4 low normal, FT3 low normal. 12-year-old girl with obesity, uh, Dr. Uh, Vibha, FT3 is uh, normal, FT4 is normal, TSH is 8. So this is classically subclinical hypothyroidism. Second case, Dr. Manoj, 18-year-old boy with lethargy, FT3 is low, FT4 is low, TSH is 18. But this is central hypothyroidism. So this is TSH is not above 20. This is central hypothyroidism. Dr. Ishita, 14-year-old girl with tremor and weight loss, FT3 is high, FT4 is high, TSH is low. So this is thyrotoxicosis very classically. Dr. Naveen, 12-year-old boy with weight loss, FT3 is 1.1, which is high. FT4 is normal. TSH is low. T3 so this is T3 treatment. T3 toxicosis, not treatment, because in the treatment, T4 will be low because it will be suppressed on the other right. Dr. Sayan, 14-year-old girl with thyroid swelling, FT3 is high. FT4 is normal. TSH is low. So this is T3 toxicosis, which was a bit confusing from that perspective. No, no, a T4 is low. Okay, so this will be T3 treatment in that perspective. Yeah. No, no, this one. Okay. Yeah, so it, the T4 is normal. So this will be T3 toxicosis. Not treatment, T3 toxicosis. It is shown different, but it is C3 oxyposis. 24-year-old boy with headache and weight loss. FT3 is high. FT4 is normal. TSH is low. I think this is already we've discussed. This is like a TSH secreting adenoma.